Hi everybody and welcome to the Matt Weston 365 YouTube channel and another episode of Flow Bytes, small bite sized videos designed to help you get through your day to day problems that you encounter with Microsoft Power Automate. What we're going to be looking at today is one of the things that I've been asked most about which is how can I track and audit approvals as they go through the approval process. So what we're going to be looking at today is how I can send uh, an approval to multiple people and how I can see those approvals coming back in uh, in almost real time. So I'm going to go back to, first of all, the flow which I created in my create, uh, sending approvals from SharePoint, uh, where we took an approval list from SharePoint, we found the users that we wanted to send it to, and then we sent the approvals. We're going to build on that, and we're going to add our enhancements so that as well as being able to take the users from SharePoint, we can then track when those users actually approve uh, and then we can start to see those approvals come in live. So let's go and have a look. So let's just start off by reminding ourselves exactly what we had in SharePoint to begin with. And what I've got is I've got a policies document library that contains my documents, but it also contains a single piece of metadata, which is the department. And that's quite an important uh, field because what I've also got in SharePoint is I have a list called approvers. And this is going to contain all the people who are mapped to a particular department uh, who should be approving the documents when they're submitted. So, for example, in sales, which is where my policy was, I've got sale, uh, I've got Derek Trotter, Rodney Trotter, and also myself. Now, the additional thing that I've got for this scenario is that I've also created a new list called approval log. And the approval log is going to track some uh, some small details just to allow us to see this in action. I'm going to track the title, which will be the name of the document, the approver, as in the person who who's the approval has gone to, their response, and when they responded. So now that we've refamiliarized ourselves with, uh, with SharePoint, let's go and have a look at what we did in Flow. So in our Flow, what we had was for a selected file, i.e. when a user goes and runs the automation or the flow directly from SharePoint itself. We were going to get some basic information and store those in variables. We were going to get the file properties so we can actually get all of the information that we need to know about the file and in particular the department that that person belongs to. Also the get items. So the get items was designed to go and look at the approvers list, filter based on the department and then bring the, all of the approvers that we wanted back we could then build up the list of approvers and eventually send that, appro uh, that approvers list um, into the approval action to, to then get up that full approval. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to modify it so that we can then make it fit the scenario that we want, which is giving us that auditability. So I'm just going to go back to my flows for a moment. So here's the flow that I have just shown you. I'm going to go and save as, and let's go and call this part two. Okay, so when I copy my flow, I just need to go and edit it to start off with. And what I need to do is just really start deleting some of this. So first of all, I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way back up. I'm going to get rid of my start and wait for an approval because I'm going to do it in a slightly different way this time. I'm also going to delete my apply to each for now because I want to build this up in a slightly different way as well. So I'm still going to keep my get file properties so that I can get all of the mess data. And I'm still going to use my get items to go and get the list of approvers. But now that I've done that, I'm going to go and add a new step. I'm going to go and add and apply to each. And again, I'm just going to start building up from scratch. So I'm going to go and select the value from get items. So that's going to allow me to select each approver from, the, from that list. I'm going to go and add a new action. This time when I go and use my approvals, 
I'm not going to use start and wait for an approval. So that does everything in one single action, but I don't want that. I want to break this out a little bit more now. What I want to do is create an approval, which is effectively the start aspect. And I'm also going to then add a wait for an approval. So I'm going to add that. And I'm also going to add the wait. So effectively, what I've done is break open that um, that start on wait into its constituent parts, but I'm manually running the, 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 the create and approval and then also the wait. In order for this to wait, what I need to do is provide it with the approval ID that comes from this action. So I'm going to go and do that first. So let's just go and search for ID. Oh, I actually need to configure my approval step first. So let's go and say that everyone must approve. But because I'm going to loop around each one, I'm going to treat each individual as though they're having their own approval step. And the reason for this is so that we can individually track each response that comes back. If I was to just put all of them in there, then it would mean that um, I would have to wait for all of those responses to come back and then treat them all in one go. But whereas I want to actually do this uh, on an individual basis. So I'm going to go and uh, configure my approval action. And let's call this approve document. And let's put the name in there. So that's the file name. I'm going to assign it and I'm going to use my dynamic content to go and assign it to the approver email because that's what it wants. It wants the email address. I'm going to put a link in there. Making sure I'm providing a link to the file and not for my, my get items. And then let's just put some static text in here. Okay, so now that I've configured my approval, this time I should be able to go and get my approval ID. There we go. So the approval ID is the unique ID that comes from here. So that's how this the, the flow will know that this has been responded to. But I want to actually do something whilst I'm uh, as, or as soon as I've created my approval. And that's actually to go and put something into the audit log to say that that person has been added as an approver. So between here, I'm going to go and create an item. And let's go and configure it. So I'm going to go and select my site. I'm going to go and select my list, which is my approval log. And then I just need to give it some, uh, some basic information. So I'm going to put the title as, again, the name of the document. I'm going to put the details in of the person who's going to approve this so that I can track who it, who it actually is. And so that I can uh, basically give the, uh, the SharePoint field everything it wants, I'm just going to take the claims from my get items. I've got a default value of uh, the response value as pending, and I'm going to leave it as that. And we haven't responded yet, so I'm not going to fill anything in here. So now if I shrink that down, let's follow this through. So I've created my approval. I've created an item in the audit log, and I'm now going to wait for that person to actually respond. What I need to do now is just uh, um, go and update that same item once that approval has been completed. So I can go and add an action. I can go and update an item this time. And let's go and configure that once more. So site address, the list, my log. I can then also take the ID from my create item so that I know that I'm going to be updating the same item that I created here. Because title is mandatory, I need to go and provide that again. So let's go and put that once more to my file name. 
Now this time, I don't need to provide the approver claims. I provided that last time. So if I leave that blank, it won't update. It'll just stay as it was. However, this time, I'm going to have a response value. So I want to change it this time. Rather than being pending, I want it to change to whatever the response is that came back from the approval. So I'm going to click on the pending. And this time, rather than selecting one of the options that I've got from the list, I'm going to go and select enter custom value. And what I actually want to record here is the outcome of my approval. So I'm waiting for the outcome from here to put into my list. And all I'm going to do then is I'm going to go and put when they actually responded. So for the very basic element of this, I'm just going to go and use UTC now. Obviously, if you want to do some transformation on that to make it into your time zone and so on, then you can do that. But now I've got an updated item. And at this point, my, uh, my loop will then finish. However, in my list at the moment, I have three people in the, in the list that need to approve this. And by default, an apply to each loop will do uh, will run in serial. So it'll do one, then it'll wait for that one to complete. It'll do the next one, it'll wait for that one to complete, and then it'll move on. But I don't want that because I've got three level uh, three approvers here. I want to be able to push to all of these in one go. So the final thing that I need to do is go and change the concurrency setting for my loop. So on my apply to each, I can click on my ellipsis, my three dots. I can go to my settings. And I'm going to turn my concurrency control on. Now, by default, this will uh, default to 20 parallel runs. And if I want to, I can increase this up to a maximum of 50. So obviously, that's the limit of the number of uh, parallel approvers that I can have in this method. So let's go and press done. So now I've got everything that I need in here to be able to successfully go and run and track my approvals as they come through. So let's save that. Actually, one thing I need to do because I copied this flow is I just need to go and turn it on. Otherwise, it won't show up in my SharePoint list. So now that's turned on, let's go back to my library, which is called policies. Here I can see is my sales document and it's got a sales department. And let's just go and trigger that. I'm going to automate, there's my send approvals from SharePoint part two. So this is my latest one. So it's going to select that. And I'm going to go and run it. So just while that's running, let's just go and remind ourselves who we should be expecting to see as part of the approval process for this document. We should be seeing Derek Trotter, Rodney Trotter, and also me. Let's go to my approval log. So let's give my approval log a quick refresh. Okay, excellent. So here I can see that I've got three approvals waiting for the sales document. Here's my approvers. And the response at the moment is pending with no response. So what happens if I go and then update this or, or, or approve it from my point of view? Let's go and see. So if I come across to my approvals, let's go and approve this and just hit confirm on that. Okay, so my response has been recorded. Has anything changed in my list? Let's just give that a refresh. Yes, so I can see that the sales document has been approved by me, and there's the uh, date and time that it was approved as well. So obviously what I can do then is I can just go and apply some very basic column formatting onto this just to make it look a little bit more like a dashboard. So let's just go and change it to some very basic styles here. Let's save that. So using that method, you can really easily track the number of approvers that you've actually got going through or the documents that need to be approved and who's done it, who's still waiting. You can then start to build out your entire process to really start to take advantage of that information that you've now captured. And yes, we use SharePoint, you could use Excel, you could use other data sources for this in exactly the same way. But hopefully that's just given you a flavor for how easy that is and how you can really build that 
in as long as you're not using the, the, uh, the standard start and wait for an approval action. You need to be able to use uh, the, the two individual actions together. Also, don't forget that the concurrency has a limit of 50. So if you, uh, you are limited to just having 50 people as approvers in that one particular action, obviously that can build out. So if you wanted further levels of approval, then you can take that further from that point. So I hope you found that useful. I hope that's got some of you over the hurdles that you've been asking me about. If you do have any questions, please do feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn, Twitter, or comment on here and I'll happily come back in and help wherever I can. But until next time, I hope you'll stay, stay well, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.